Thanks, my name is uh, Bill Baumgartner. Uh, this is my first Biohackathon. Uh, I'm very excited to be here, and a sincere thank you to the organizers uh, for inviting me. Um, I've, having, having seen what's been done in the last nine, I really wish uh, I had been there for them. Um, I'm from the University of Colorado. I work in uh, Larry Hunter's group, uh, and our group uh, really has a focus on the biologists, and in particular, uh, helping biologists understand the results of their experiments in the context of what is known about biology. Uh, and today I'm going to take the opportunity to uh, tell you a little bit about of our approach to semantic data integration. Um, and, and our approach has kind of two core tenets that, that we try to follow. One is really a commitment uh, to community-driven resources, and in particular I'm talking about uh, the open biomedical ontologies here. Um, and then the, the other tenant is really uh, we want uh, our approach to allow biologists to think um, really in terms of biology and not in terms of different data sources that may contain information about that biology. Um, so this work was uh, initially started by Kevin Livingston, who I believe is an alumnus of the Biohackathon, uh, although I don't remember which year. Um, and uh, he. He named our project Kebab, which is uh, somehow an acronym for a knowledge base of biomedicine. Um, so uh, we, we accomplished these uh, core tenets really by making a commitment to the open biomedical ontologies, like I mentioned. And that, I'm guessing most of the people in this room are familiar, but just in case, uh, real briefly, the, the OBOs uh, are a suite of um, orthogonal, interoperable reference ontologies in the biomedical domain. Uh, they number uh, at 155 today. Um, we use a subset of the 155, but really a, a core set of some, some of the more uh, prominent ontologies. Um, and we use uh, these ontologies as our vocabulary for creating uh, knowledge representations and for integrating data. Um, so in the past, I and others have explained kebab kind of by walking people through a step-by-step -step, uh, uh, process or procedure on how it's built. I'm going to try something a little bit different today. Uh, we're going to skip to the end and look at a knowledge representation and then maybe work backwards and, and I'll provide some context. Um, so let's say for our knowledge representation, we're interested in modeling the interaction between two proteins uh, represented by the, the two green boxes on the screen. Uh, and uh, the oboes, are modeled in AL, so we're going to do the same here. Um, uh, as a design decision, uh, Kebab models things in a, a process-centric manner, or really an event-centric manner, as opposed to an entity-centric manner. Um, and so we're going to model this protein-protein interaction uh, as an interaction event um, that has as participants the two proteins, uh, as opposed to modeling one protein directly interacting with another. Um, so for this representation, we're going to make use, or we're going to reference two uh, things from the oboes. So from the relation ontology, uh, this is the uh, RO has participant property. Uh, and then from the molecular interaction ontology, we're going to reference uh, the, the class for direct interaction. And we start our representation by um, making subclasses of our interaction class and of the two proteins. And we're going to connect these subclasses with our restrictions. Uh, so now we have a direct interaction subclass. Uh, there's also the subclass of two our restrictions. And both restrictions are on property of our has participant uh, property. Uh, and then finally, we'll connect uh, will connect the restrictions to the proteins using the AL sum values from predicate. Uh, and so this is the representation that Kebab uses to model uh, direct interaction between two proteins. And the idea here uh, is that we're, we're trying to model the way biologists would think using uh, the terms from the oboes as our vocabulary. And we want this to be where their focus is. Now, this isn't to say that, that that's the only thing um, in kebab. So uh, we also make reference to the fact that, that 
this protein has a uniprot identifier. Um, and this uniprot identifier, uh, this uniprot identifier serves as a, a field value for some field that's part of a uniprot record. Um, and it may not be important for, for a biologist to know that or, or to know that maybe this protein also has a, a protein ontology identifier. And similarly, uh, this protein also has a uniprot identifier. And it may be the case that this interaction is asserted in a, a, a database record from the database of interacting proteins and possibly also asserted in a record from, uh, from Mint. Um, so all of this information uh, is represented uh, in Kebab um, explicitly. Um, and with the idea that we want to create a boundary around what we consider the, the bio, the biology of Kebab. Um, and so Kebab represents databases using extensions of the information content, or sorry, of the information artifact ontology. Um, and we refer to this part of Kebab as ICE world. Um, so ICE uh, it references the information content entity class in the IAO. Um, so we essentially have a boundary around the biology representations uh, in Kebab. And the only links that we allow to cross this boundary um, are this uh, denotes link from the IAO. Uh, and this essentially is a link from an information content entity to some portion of, of the biology graph. Um, so this is a microcosm of what Kebab looks like. But recall that I told you uh, that I was going to tell you the story in reverse. So in, in reality, the way Kebab is generated is we populate it with information content entities that are parsed from resources that have been downloaded or Im imported. Uh, and then a series and a succession of forward chaining rules queries the knowledge base, mines data from the ICE side of things, and incrementally builds up, builds up the biology. So uh, we heard earlier today um, and yesterday the importance about provenance. And so it's, um, I wanted to point out that the, the provenance for every biological assertion uh, within Kebab is kept. Um, however, it's, it's only there when it's needed to be. And so it's possible uh, for humans or for applications uh, who are acquiring kebab, uh, such, as, such as reasoners, to really just focus in on the biology that they care about. And that's one of the fundamental goals of, of, our, uh, of our approach. Uh, so <laughs> what is currently in kebab? Uh, we have a number of, of representations, uh, and, and this work is ongoing, but there's things ranging from drug target interactions to uh, biological process participation, uh, cell component localization, uh, disease gene variant associations, um, and the like. Uh, and in practice, what can you do uh, with kebab? And, and here are, I'll, I'll give you a couple of use cases. So uh, for one, you can obviously query it. So we can query it. Um, and again, the idea is that we can query it um, just thinking about the biology. So here's an example. Find drugs that interact with proteins encoded by genes with an association to a phenotype. Uh, and the point here being that the user doesn't really need to understand the underlying structure of whatever source databases uh, are required to answer this query. And in this case, it's actually three, at least three uh, source databases that would have to be integrated uh, to re return the results from this query. Another use case uh, is work that's uh, done by Tiffany Callahan, who's uh, here at the Biohackathon this year. Um, and she has done some hypothesis generation work. Um, 
where she, she has built systems that can take a query, such as find protein targets of drugs that interact with trimatinib, and abstract or extract the owl graph from the knowledge base containing the results of that query, and then create an abstraction network that really removes some of the owl complexities and creates a network that's then suitable for use with some inductive inference methods. Uh, and she's, she's done some nice work. So this particular example uh, is soon to be published. And of the uh, top 20 predicted edges, uh, her uh, biological expert concluded from a literature review that uh, 15 of the top 20 were, were legitimate uh, new edges. So we're exploring ways of maybe some for feed forward uh, systems for uh, running inference and then adding the results back into Kebab. Um, so some recent developments of our uh, development work. Um, I'm going to point out, uh, I think, the one on the bottom. So we don't yet have a forward-facing or public-facing endpoint for Kebab. Um, for some reasons that we heard of yesterday involving, you know, afraid of users uh, submitting queries that, that will never end or will return uh, terabytes of data. Um, but also uh, for reasons about licensing data. Um, and a lot of the, the data sources uh, that we import seem to have non-redistribution licenses. Uh, not all, but many of them. So um, I'm curious uh, to hear uh, and maybe discuss with some of you uh, the, the ways you've dealt with uh, licensing issues. Um, I want to move on to what kind of what I wanted to work on at this hackathon um, and, and one of the next steps that we're thinking about taking kebab, and that's integrating text mine assertions. Um, so as Jin Dong pointed out yesterday, uh, the scientific literature is really the largest source of biomedical knowledge um, that we have. And unlike many databases, the literature does contain the context that is so crucial uh, to understanding the biology. Uh, and so, although there are kind of a plethora of sources for uh, obtaining concept annotations that have been mined from text, there's really uh, few sources, uh, at least that I know of, um, that contain uh, text mine assertions, so relations between the concepts be between, uh, or that have been mined from text. Um, one, however, that we, we have found, and I think we'll start with uh, for the biohackathon, uh, is the SEMMEDDB. And so SEMMEDDB, uh, briefly, is a repository of uh, assertional annotations that have been mined uh, using NLM SEMREP tool from PubMed. Uh, so they number uh, 89 million uh, total uh, relations, and one of the reasons well, I think this might be a good place to start is the variety of predicates that they have. So they have 30 different predicates that they mine. Um, they also mine the negation of all of these, or most of these. Um, and uh, so one of the things that I'm interested in doing is trying to create knowledge representations uh, using the oboes as a vocabulary for uh, many, if not all, of these, of these predicates. And I think there will be some that are that are straightforward. You know, is it clearly maps to the RDFS subclass of relation? There's a part of relation in the relation ontology itself, uh, but there are others that are perhaps more complicated. So um, there is a uh, a treats method or a treats predicate in the relation ontology that that is relevant to, to uh, a drug or a chemical treating something. Um, but as we can see, we, we have many uses of treats within here, and so there's also a procedure treats disorders. Uh, so the, there will be some representational issues that uh, crop up that we need to figure out. Um, just thinking ahead about uh, work done here at the Biohackathon and beyond, um, I think when we import a database, we often assume that what we're importing is the truth. Uh, and when we start to work with text annotations, we need to, we need to have a, 
take a different approach. Um, so there are things that we need to take into account with respect to just the noise of NLP systems when we're dealing with text annotations, or uh, maybe with conflicting statements that we find among articles. Um, and then uh, I want to thank Evan for a conversation yesterday. Uh, you know, we need to maybe even think about the evolution of knowledge over time. So if we extract a fact from some article in 1985, uh, does that fact still hold today? You know, science has, has changed over time, so maybe it does not. Um, there are other uh, issues with reasoning uh, over the oboes uh, in spite of their inconsistency. So even though they claim to be an interoperable system, uh, it turns out that they're not totally inter interoperable, at least not without some manual intervention. Um, and then we also have some preliminary work uh, integrating uh, EHRs uh, with kebab. Um, so I'll just summarize by saying my goal uh, for here is to, uh, to one, to standardize the representation of text annotations with other relevant efforts here, so pub annotation. Um, we had preliminarily been considering the web annotation model, uh, but I think I'd like to, to talk to the community and, and see if that's actually the consensus choice. Uh, and then, like I said, to develop OWL representations using uh, the OBO vocabulary for some or all of the, the predicates in the semantic med DB. Um, and the thought here, and, and I'd be curious to hear your thoughts as well, is, is really to have, uh, to begin the development of a community vetted library of these representations. So the, you know, the gene ontology, the advent of the gene ontology allowed uh, consistent annotation of genomes across all these different model organism databases. Uh, I think it would be great to start having a library of biomedical representations that could be used consistently either across NLP tools for output or, or a variety of sources. So um, I'll close by uh, acknowledging uh, Larry Hunter, who's the PI for this work, um, Tiffany Callahan, who uh, is here. Uh, she's been uh, easily the largest consumer of kebab and, and also integral uh, in some of the recent development efforts we've had. Um, uh, Mike Beta, who's our uh, local ontology guru and knowledge representation uh, person in the lab. Uh, Elizabeth White, who's been working on uh, incorporating a Reactome or an OWL version of Reactome uh, into Kebab. Uh, Mark Dea, who did some uh, important work with the build scripts. Uh, and then uh, Dan McShann, who's done some work uh, templating queries for us. So with that, I'll say uh, thank you again to the organizers and thanks for your attention.